All right, cool guys. So this is a tournament game I played back in 2015. Let me actually copy this. 2015. And it's a North American Open. The North American Open in Vegas. I was playing in the under 2300 section, but I was 2297, I think. Something like that. Maybe 2290, actually. 2290. So in this tournament, I was 2290. But I was like, uh, I just wanted, I didn't want to play in the open. I kind of just wanted to go get the money there and, and like place, and which I did. I still want some money, but um, I just wanted to place very quickly then. So this was 2015. So this was under 2300 when I could have played open, but I didn't want to. So 20, I played under 2300 section. And this guy, his rating is 2106, Raul Cristalago. So the title of it is Canty Works the Perk. Now, it's actually the name of the perk is actually called the Pierce. If you Google it, it's going to bring up the Wikipedia and it tells you the pronunciation. The perk is actually the Pierce. And it's a mispronunciation when you say perk. So it's kind of weird. I've been brought up saying perk all my life. But, uh, you know, then you learn it's Pierce and you're like, what is life? I didn't even know this is life. What is this? You're right. So if you're new out there and you don't know that it's actually the Pierce, it's actually called the Pierce, but it's spelled P R C E I R C. Perk, guys. Perk. So. Um, funny, funny title for today. Canty works the perk. So I have white here, the white pieces. Let me actually upload this PGN. Um, copy this. I'm going to upload this right now. Pie man says we in here. Welcome to the stream, bro. Let me add this. I'm going to turn the board off because it populates the ending position. And I don't want you guys to see that. So you guys can be, okay, here we go. Everything's up. All right, here we go. Perfect. So I play white here. So you follow along, put your stuff in the chat if you feel like you are a Jedi. If you are not, that's okay. We're still here. You learn. This is Jedi Training 101. So here we are. I go E4, best by test. I don't play nothing else. If it, if it, you see something else, it's just it's not canty, right? So E4, D6, okay? So this can be a number of things. This can be the Philidor defense, which easily goes into E5 a lot. Or it could be, you know, anything else, maybe C6 or small, what do you call the small center defense or the rat defense? A lot of things you can do with this. Very flexible. D4, I always tell even my students too, I always try to put two pawns in the center. Just if they allow you to do it, always do it. Always do it. Yes, C6. Yes, sometimes C6. So knight of six, I go knight to C3 and I defend the pawn. Easy stuff here. You also have F3 in a lot of lines too. I see uh, actually in the database, this is Pretty popular, f3 and bishop e3 and queen d2 against this, what he's about to do here. He goes g6, so almost, I mean, I play this as black. So looking at this, this is like um, king's Indian defense. But unfortunately, it's with e4. So, you know, with me, I'm not, you know, I know how to break this down quickly. A lot of times you like to push Harry the h pawn, uh, shout out to Simon Williams, or, you know, h4, like near Ditsky has his emote for it. So h4 is just automatic sometimes, h4, h5. So... Watch how this stuff unfolds. Knight to f3, I just de develop. He goes bishop to g7. And then I pull h3. This is, I learned this stuff from Roman DG Hasvili, if you know who that is. Roman DG Hasvili, I play his stuff in it with white. I love this. What he likes to do here is very, very nice because um, it's very, it's unplayed. It's unplayed and people don't really know what to do against it too much. So I like that it's flexible here. So. Okay, so let's go to the next move. H3, he gets out of the way with castle. I go bishop E3, and I'm anticipating a move. Hopefully, he goes knight D7, C6, or even A6. Um, all these moves I'm prepared for, and my favorite one that black plays is knight to D7. So I'm hoping for knight D7, so it's like, all right, maiden 7, which is really not, but it feels like that, maiden 7. But he doesn't go knight D7. He goes C6, which is a very flexible move. It's also threatening B5. And it's also doing a queen to c7 here. So, so far so good. This is still kind of theory. a4, I like to do this a lot to stop b5. I'll tell you right now, if you play this as white, anything similar to this, you need to watch out. For instance, bishop d3, good move. But when they go b5, and then you just castle, and let's not even go bishop d3. Let's go like bishop c4, or let's do this for tempo-wise. b5, bishop e2, and b4. I'm hitting this knight, and this is hanging. You fall into this. I think I just fell into this like a day or two ago. It was a bullet game. But I still was like, oh, I forgot, you know, so you always will get in trouble with this pawn a lot, a lot, just so you know. Um, so be aware of that. But I like to play a4. Roman does it, and I follow what Roman does. So he likes a4. We go a4 here. Knight to a6, not a move, not a fan of it, never seen it. 
I don't know what this is. So knight a6, I'm not about to take this. But I also know that this is not the usual. And he's kind of far away from the game early on here. So at this point, there's a number of ways I can go. He's trying to go knight to b4, says Bob. He could. He could definitely go knight before. I just don't see a follow-up or a nice potential here. I always like to tell my students, too, what's your follow-up? What's the plan? This I can always kick you, too. It'd be different if I played c4, too, and a4. Then you got this permanent outpost on b4. But if I can move my knight later on, maybe like bishop d3 or somewhere, because this is, has to be defended, so I can't technically move this. If he does go knight b4, then I can play c3. That's the only way to get rid of him. Temporary. Knight to c7, maybe it looks ugly. Yeah, a little bit. I, I, it does. It actually it does. I mean, as long as the knight on c3, then the pawn is stuck, but it's hard to move him. Correct, Nagasta. Correct. So it's, 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 it's as good as this looks. Sometimes, if you don't know what to do, it's not that good. h3 also stops knight to g4. I want to keep the bishop here. It's just stuff to notice. So um, after knight to a6, I go queen to d2. Honestly, I sat here as a waiting move. Which is a very good waiting move. Honestly, I'm not. I don't have real intentions of casting queenside unless it's you know I'm guaranteed to win over here because I've already compromised a little bit with a4. It kind of pervert provokes b5. Queen a5 can still come here. My king's a little loose over here, so I got to be careful, very careful. So knight to c7. Knight to c7. Bishop d3. Still a waiting move here. And then he goes bishop d7. And this is where it's about to get uh, interesting for you guys here. Bishop d7, castles. And there's a lot of chess left here. But it's, uh, there's a lot to do. So black goes rookie eight. White to move. Now, this is a very common position that I'm sure many of you, all is 150 into, 152 of you here today. Welcome to the stream. If you're playing white here, you probably maybe got this position uh, sometime in your life, honestly. So this is very, very uh, good for white, and people don't understand what to do here. So here is like very fun. I like to show this game a lot when it comes to um, how to actually use this position because it looks symmetrical in a way with your knights and your bishops. So you have to be careful. Do you go d5? Do you go e5? Do go... Like, what do you do? There's so much to do, and it almost just looks good. And in chess, looks are very deceiving. What do I do now, Phil? Correct, Elfins. Correct. What do I do now? What, what do I do? It looks good. What, what do I even do? I don't even know. I don't even know. E5 loses to counting, says Nacosta. Counting? E5 loses to counting. What does that mean? This is the classic development 101 from White. Yes. His problem is he doesn't know what to do with queen bishop after h3 ah uh, yes that's why you play bishop d7 so we have bishop f4 from adam will and then we have rook loft but i know you mean lift from tba rook a3 you know that's a long-term swing i mean that's a big boy swing you have to move one two three four pieces and then move the rook over here so you know this is where i say like that's not realistic but it's a nice plan though I don't think you get enough material with e5 to force black to trade. Ah, uh, got you. Counting such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Oh, okay, Bob. You know what? Psst. I didn't need... Thanks for the clarity. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for the follow, Irish McMillan. Thank you. So, I actually did. I went e5. That's exactly what I did. I played e5 here. Can anyone explain why e5? This is... Oh, man. This is one of my favorite positions to play. When I have this pawn on e5, that's not a move, says BTM98. That's right. I'm going to say e5, says pawn sire. The knight on g6 only has one move. Oh, f6, this one. Booting a knight, yep. Actually, I see it now, knight to the edge. Well, that's just not a move. Knight h5, g4. We just showed that on the screen. The knight is trapped. Yes, I did compromise my, my, uh, my king size structure. But you only get two pawns for it. And actually, if I'm opening up yours too, it works. You just got to be precise with white. But it's losing a piece. That doesn't work. Uh, that You really don't have any other move but knight to d5. So let's see what happened. f6. Yeah, correct, Joshua. To harass the knight. Yes. That's his only move. So black needs to take. Correct. Correct. But he just went here now. Knight to d5. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, there's a lot of chess left here. It may look like, man, white's crushing, which, yeah, you know, I, when I ran into the engine, it went back and forth. I had some chances where I could have done some stuff, you know, better or faster and vice versa for him. 
but um, in, in a human standpoint, human standpoint here, there's a there's a lot of chests left as even with this nice attack. So let's see how it unfolds. So after knight to d5, white to move, guys. What do you do now? It's time to attack this king. It looks right. Everything's developed. How do you finish it? How do you even start it? Because there's nothing to finish. Open up the center. To take is a mistake, says Darkest Army. Ooh, that was nice. That was like right in order. Open up the center. Ah, to take is a mistake. For the Jedi from the other side of the room. Perfect. Bishop g5. Yep, Bishop h6. To hang Bishop is a mistake. That's a nice one, Pi Man. We, we gonna add that. That's Jedi mind trick number 9004. Give up, Pi Man. <laughs> Give up, this Pi Man. Funny. <laughs> Elephants. <laughs> I like Bishop H6. Let's see the Rook lift. Man, y'all are into this Rook lift. This is Rook A3. Just Rook A3. Drop the mic. Look at him real crazy. Because that's probably what I would do. I would look at you really crazy. Like, what? Rook A3? You're going all the way over here. You know what? I, I'm going to play some random moves. Like, I want you to do it. I, I'm going to play Rook B8 and Rook A8 back and forth just to see how you, what you do with this Rook. Rook A3 awkward. Yep, it, it's very awkward. I'm probably taking on D6. That is a thing, actually. Taking on d6 followed by maybe knight e4. But here's the thing. I love my bishops, and I do have a chance to go bishop h6. So if you said bishop h6, you are correct. Bishop h6. Because if he takes it, my queen's annoyingly over here. And this is for defense resources here, guys. Uh, thanks for the follow, Nick BC. So after bishop takes h6, queen takes h6. Check this out. A lot of time... This is, you, how would you get this queen from out of here with a piece? You know, a knight on f5, knight on f7, or queen on f8. None of those are possible. So if he takes it, this is virtually over. There's really almost nothing he can do. A knight e6 does stop knight g5, but it's temporary. I may be able to get h4, h5 in. I may be able to do all of this before the time he, he's able to defend. It just shows a lot about the position. I also have knight e4, knight g5 with a reinforcement as well. So a lot to do, a lot to do. Lot to do. So I'll play bishop h6. Has anyone participated in 2018 Crazy House Championship? Um, not me, actually. I'm always usually focused on regular chess, but um, I know a lot of people that are really good at that. Ed Weird, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream, big fella. We in here. Thanks for the follow, beef you. I want a bishop g5, so taking on d6 would prevent the recapture. Correct. Let's actually take a look at that. Right here. Bishop g5, so capturing here is pinned here. Honestly, this is a move. I just felt 1,500 bits from Ed Wig, guys, and he shared it with people in the chat right now. So take a look at the chat as Ed Wig may have shared some of those bits with you. Thanks so much for the 1,500 bits, 1,550. Thanks, big fella. Appreciate the love. Gamer DHS, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. We in here, bro. Bishop H8 is annoying, says uh, Evan. Correct. So check this out. Bishop G5, I'm getting here, but I got a little bit more room with Bishop H6. Just a little bit more room. JC says, thanks. Welcome to the stream, JC. Welcome to the stream. J-Dub says, big fella. So Bishop H6, it's a thing, right? Ed Weird, thanks so much, bro. But I get more room, meaning I have a space. So, it, you know, a lot of times you can follow up Queen G5, Queen H4, Knight G5. If something crazy, this queen probably over here going crazy, doing something. We don't even care. Do what, do what you want. But, you know, it, that's, that's a different story. But Queen G5, Queen H4, Knight G5. It's huge, especially if you ever played the Grand Prix. I highly recommend you look at it. It's a, something to play against the Sicilian. But in the Grand Prix, they have lines very similar to this. Usually the F files open, though. So uh, it's just an idea. And ideas from one opening, you can always take to others and use. That's definitely counterplay. Uh, so I lost that game. It's all good. Hello, everyone. What's up, Scourge? Bishop h6, and he takes first on c3. Okay. I would take the... I would. I would let white to take, to be honest. Correct. That's usually what you want. You do want to let white to hopefully take this, and I'll show you why. Like, what happened here? In the game, he played 96, but let's say I take this, which I did not. I did not take this. But if you do take this, the problem is that I have allowed black to help out. So you need to be careful when you take this bishop on g7. Anybody out there that plays this, and has done this and has not seen success a lot of times 
you need to probably wait on taking this because I can always defend and I come back and then when, when I do defend, let's make a random. I do defend, I'm able to run to this side of the board for safety and you may even lose the game because you did too much. So it happens a lot. Be careful before taking that. You need to be sure, have a plan. So he goes knight to e6. So I just told you I didn't take it. So white to move here, what do you do instead? What do you do instead? Let's go, baby. Yeah, it happened. It did happen. So 23-22, I know. Pops, come on, says h4. H4. He's a bad man. Yeah, he's a bad man. Lessons, baby. I like it. That's right. Elevation. That's right. White to move here. Not bishop takes g7. It's not the move. It's not a move. Which it is, but it's not. Moving one of the rooks says fly eagles fly. Okay, I like it. Where are you moving it? Rook f to b1 from nick bc. H4, H5. Uh, H4, H5 is very interesting. <laughs> Not rook A3. <laughs> rook A3, bro. I'm looking for knight G5 and rook A to B1. Oh my goodness. Razor Brand found a move. KF32. KF32, guys. Wow. KF32. What a move. That is. I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of it. Rook E1. Rook F to E1. EX D6. I would like to get F4. All right. All right. I would like to get F4 outright. You would like to get to F4 is what you're saying? Maybe you could. King in stealth mode. Yeah. <laughs> King in stealth mode. Rook F to E1. That's what I play. I play Rook F to E1, guys. I play Rook F to E1. I love attacking chess. And there's some things to learn here that you're going to see. Half of the board, he says. Half of the board, yeah. KF32 playing some 4D chess. Correct. KF32 is back. I'm in. That's right. Yeah, we Come on now. KF32. That's real. So Rook F to E1. He goes Queen A5. And now it's time to do some things here, guys. There is still chess to play. There is still some chess to play. You got to not be accurate. Well, yeah, be accurate. But this is not over. You may think you have an attack. Honestly, this knight's very nice here. This knight is very annoying. Also, in some cases where you think you may have this, he can step into F8 and defend it. So it's very, I mean, extremely annoying. And I took some time here. I remember sitting here trying to figure this little puzzle out. How do I win this? I know I got an advantage. I know I have some type of initiative. But how do I win this? So what do you do? There's not too many decent moves, says Darkest Army. We in here. What's up, Heat Miser? Welcome to the stream, bro. Welcome, Heat Miser. Bring the rook in. Can't put stuff on G5. Yes, yes. Amused bystander? Absolutely. I think I remember, you know, going through the analysis of this game. Like, I was like, oh, man. I remember how I felt because I was like, I can't get anything here. And this is like the key. I mean, if I can get here and here, this is like over in a few moves. But I, I, it's hard. It's very difficult to figure that out. Do you see, do you have to take the bishop here? I highly recommend you don't take the bishop because like we just looked at, guys, is I can play rook h8 and let's just make like h4, rook h8 and then like g4. I can go h6. I don't even have to. I could just run this way too and let you check me and I am gone. I am going to the other side of the board where civilization is and I'm, I'm hiding forever. Like it's, then you did all this extraness and my king's actually weak. So this it's, it's just too much and you don't want to go into that. And not be sure. That's a problem when I mean, you're not really sure like that. Do you take on e6? I mean, sacking the rook? Uh, you could. You could, actually. I never really considered it. I'm sticking with knight g5. Works no problem. <laughs> and then he says, he, then he said, screw hey, knight g5. Push him. f4, f5, h4, knight g5, exd. c4 and d5 isn't going to happen, too. Yeah, but I'm never, you know, every, my students all know, and people here on the stream know that I am not a fan of trading queens and attacking positions, unless I am up material. And I mean a piece, meaning like a piece. Even then, I'm like, do I have to? But usually when I trade this queen off, I'm not an in-game player, which I, I, I know how to play the in-game. That's a different story. I just don't prefer to. I like playing tactical positions. So everyone has their, their positions. But I'm not playing C4, which I could play D5 later. But I need to make sure my queen's not in the way there. I would rather sack a pawn to keep my queen on the board for more initiative and play and tactics than to trade and like go into a boring, maybe I'm slightly better in this endgame. Rookie four, maybe. We've got momentum. Take D6. 
shout out to Darkest Army with a rookie four idea. That's what I threw on the board. Rookie four. And was like, you know what time it is. Oh, yeah. You know, you this is uh, heat just comes over you and you start thinking like, whoa, oh, snap, I forgot. And then you like think about everything else with chess. Like, dang, man, I shouldn't have did that. Dang, I shouldn't have. Dang, I shouldn't have. And then you just start going on the list and on a rant and your brain starts spinning because you know that it's about to go down. It's a lot going on here. A lot going on here. Rook E4. So I put the Rook on E4 and I was ready. I was ready to work. Rook E4 pushing tight. <laughs> Thanks, BTM. This is similar attack to last analysis. Very similar, right? If you look at the video on the YouTube, by the way, guys, let me put that command in the chat. If you're just getting here, first off, welcome. Hit the follow button. <clears throat> and also check out this YouTube right here. So the the last video we just posted had a similar attack to this. But if you notice, this is my favorite stuff to attack. I love to put a bishop on d3 and my queen somewhere and 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 just go to work. Go to work with these pieces. Tactics win games. So I love it. We're gonna get the whole squad on h7 again, says Elfins. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Elfins. You're right. J Roach 96. Thanks for the follow. Rookie four. He goes bishop h8. Okay, bishop h8. So this move, I uh, looked at with the engine. And there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Honestly, there's a lot to do here. So what do you do? Do you do the most obvious, rook h4, most obvious? But you also have other moves. So like, what, what, do you, what would you do here? So many things you can do. Thanks for the follow, patience, ls. Is he is going to have to some eyes on it? Yeah. Why did he move the bishop? Uh, moving the bishop because it's a prophylactic way of saying like this is, let's say, let's make some random moves. Rook d8, rook h4, like a b5. Take this and queen comes in with h4. So to eliminate this sequence, you just get rid of the bishop. And that's something to know, guys, if you ever play finchetto position, positions like this, finchetto bishops, you can put the bishop here. As long as you move the rook over. I do this even myself. I've done this before. Still do it. It's a thing to keep this bishop because this bishop is so strong. So you want to keep him. H4, H5 from New Mew. H4, H5 is a thing. Knight to G5. Not a thing. It is. I mean, it is Joshua. But I just didn't want to do Knight G5. Actually, no, Knight G5 is jumping off the deep end all the way down. Knight G5, bishop takes H6. And you might as well just start a new game. It's just over. But actually, rookie four, he played bishop h8. And you say knight g5 now, so maybe not. So knight g5, it's a move. It is a move. Just maybe not ready yet. Maybe not ready. But I think you can still win off knight g5. Knight g5. So this is the move I chose here. Let me see if anyone else, is, is anyone put this in here? I don't see it. I don't see the move. Bishop h6 is strong. Correct. Correct. Definitely rookie one. Oh man, wow. You know what's funny? Amused bystander put a kappa here, but it is rookie one. I put a rook A to E1. What I did here is I noticed that, like, you know, the best attacks are the ones that are fully prepared. The best ones. Best ones is the ones that have every piece helping out, ready to go. And I noticed, so I want to be able to, you know, worst case scenario, I can always have a double file. Rook h4 and use this other rook to help out, which, you know, pay attention here. That may be a hint. Also, on top of this stuff, um, I get this last piece into the game. I'm, I'm pressure. I mean, all kind of stuff can happen. So I just brought this rook to e1. Knight h4 is bad. I'm not going to lie. Actually, typing positions and sequences is helping me visualize. And, oh, really? That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's right. No logical. Correct. Why would I? But the A-pawn, and I did not care about the A-pawn because I noticed that if he takes this pawn, how far away his queen is from the game. You always want to notice, you know, especially strong pieces like the queen, how far away it is from a, a, the certain area. This queen is, is on the other side of, of the country, you know. So queen takes A4, you gonna, it's going to take, if you look at this, it's going to take like five moves for the queen to effectively get over here to help out. So if you take this... And you might as well just let's sign papers. Here's here's mine. Just sign at the bottom. I'll circle one. Circle white wins right there. We'll just sign it. We'll we'll make the, the rest of the moves. It's kind of over. Queen something five. Queen Z five. Oh. Queen Z five, Ed. That's nice. I've never seen that one. Queen Z five. That's what's up. 
Queen Z8 pins the bishop. Oh my goodness. Queen Z8. Conduct the attack after Queen A4. After you move your queen, he has Queen takes C3. Some good stuff here, guys. People paying attention. People paying attention. Rook A to E1. He played Knight G7. Which I was like, that's interesting. But, you know, I think he's just going for F5. It just makes sense. So I'll go Rook H4. Keep it simple. I really struggle to find a plan in spots like this. Yes, and this will help you, of course, too. Of like, you know, obviously, you got to focus on an area, especially with pieces. And you have to focus and you have to reverse move orders very often. Very often. Take this way, take this way, take this. Oh, you know what? Let's start with move two and then move three and then come back to move one. Oh, nope, that didn't work. Let's start on move four in this sequence and then do blah, blah, blah. Like, you have to reverse it so many times to see if it works because one of them may work. If they don't, then you have to find a quiet connector. That's what they call in one of my favorite my favorite books. But quiet connector to uh to help you do that. Queen Z5. 1 0. Whew. Queen Z5. That's crazy. So he goes knight back to E6. At this point, I was like, okay, I gained the tempo. I gained the space here. This same position, I have my rook on E4. Now I have it on H4. This is definitely a difference. Huge difference. But still, there's nothing here, guys. <laughs> this is There's nothing here right now. And this baffled me almost. Because I was like, yo, I have everything in the right place. And I cannot mate him. I'm going to let you look at this for like a minute. You cannot mate this guy right now. Bishop on H8 got relieved from his duty. Yep. Do you feel like you have to use trickery to so so they don't know what you're thinking? No, that's that's hope chess, and I try to stay far away from hope chess. Meaning, like I hope they do, I hope they do this, but that's not good unless you're absolutely losing and you have nothing else. Like game's over, you about to lose, you might as well play hope chess. That's your last resort. But uh, I rely on tactics, fundamentals of the position, what's going on, and trying to decipher it. I look, it's a big puzzle piece a lot of times. Wait, why don't black exchange bishops earlier? Why didn't black? Well, black shouldn't exchange bishops because I can get in here quicker. I can get in here really fast with queen takes, and it's, it's really rough. Knight f8 into knight g5. It's hard to break down black structure when he pin shadow. That's right. You would have to use a soft a softener, which is like a pawn, and then you sack a piece afterwards. I'm always playing hope chess. Great saying. Don't play it. Don't play no hope chess. Court case two, gotta bring the king to the attack, says <laughs> Squills Meyer. Who who's that who's seen that um Nigel short game with the king walk? I know you've seen it, Evan. We use the same book. I know you've seen it with this, the Nigel short king walk with the queen on f6. That's cool, right? Use the queen here. Use the king, I mean. Go move. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that's great. Nigel short king walk. That's a classic. I think he played Michael Adams too. Michael Adams playing black. Oh, it was Tinman. Jan Ian Tinman. Okay. Tinman. Pawn would lose. Pawn would be lose on c3. Oh yes, c3 pawn would be lose. Correct. So this is what I did, guys. I thought a long time here. Knight g5 from Pi Man. That's right. Here's my thinking. You guys have to have an idea. Knight h2 from c7s. I thought about that too, bro. But at the end of the day, what piece am I going to have to move, guys? Can somebody tell me at the end of the day before any of this stuff happens? This is what I realized. I was like, I, I got to move this one piece. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to move something before I can do anything else and before anything else works. So TBA says knight g5, bishop takes g5, f6. Correct. Yeah, that could work. That could work. Absolutely. The knight, the knight is one, but... It's actually the bishop. I moved the bishop. So I went with the bishop. And what's funny is I'm going to put the engine on right now. Let's see what he says. The engine doesn't even consider knight g5 at all. At all. Knight g5 is just not a move to the engine. Top three. Even my move is not one either. There's, there's queen c1, rook b1, and queen d1. And I was like, that's tough. And it, that says a lot. That the engine makes those moves out of this position, you're going to play queen d1 or queen c1. Come on. you really going to play queen c1, big fella? Are you serious? Queen c1? Okay, I can understand d1. But c1, no. Don't do this. This is live. Like, this is no. 
that's not a move. So, you know, in human evaluation, because you always got to have two. What's the engine say and what do you say as a human? What's going to happen, right? So you got to sack something, right? What knight c5, queen c1. I know, queen c1, question marks, right? Going ridiculous. I play rook b1 here. Uh, that could be a move, but then that also leaves, that gives my focus away from the, the thing at hand. The job at hand is over here to king. I don't care. You can take this pawn and this pawn. I will give you both of them willingly to go for an attack on this side. There is no way. Yeah, like unbelievable. Bishop takes g6. Not enough. It's not enough. You need more pieces. I need a pawn and at least another to break down everything. A computer will play queen c1, but a human could likely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Unless you like Magnus or something and understand what this move even does. Like, what are you even doing with this? Which, you know... It just doesn't happen. Queen C1 is not a move. And that was like move one. Like, that's ridiculous. But here's what I did. Here we go. Here we go. I played. What's up, Kanti, my guy? What's up, Javits? I played. Man, everybody like looking so hard at the screen right now. <laughs> everybody like, like breath. It's silent everywhere. I promise you. Silent. I played. Bishop G5. Bishop to g5. I play bishop g5, guys. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. So my idea here. What do you think this is about? Can anyone, if you can find this, guys. If you can find <laughs> OMG from Iris. <gasps> bishop g5. It's the golden move. Bishop g5. Oh my goodness. How do we miss it? <laughs> man that's funny bishop g5 poggers in the chat oh man that's great that's funny bishop g5 sack on h7 um that's nice i like it i like the idea bro i like the idea stick around big fella baiting technique get the black bishop uh, yes a baiting technique and also with venom i haven't seen anyone say it yet i haven't seen anyone say it yet what's the idea Bishop f6 sack. Okay, you close. You close. Amused by standard. So here's what it is. I'm going to actually, I, I'm, I think the engine said that this was wrong, but I don't remember. So I'm going to check this even right now too. So let's do like a6, right? I was going to take this and then come in here and then go for this route. I think that's what the plan was. But I want to see if this is just losing now. Is this just losing? Because I, I remember calculating this and I was like, that just don't work. That just doesn't work. I remember saying that. So, and it actually doesn't. The engine doesn't agree. But that was my first idea on that. And also a second one was to maybe, you know, sack this rook. And hopefully, you know, if he does take this, then cool. I have to free up this square. I know I have to. The bishop does not belong on h6 anymore. It needs to go somewhere. Bishop f4 is weird. Bishop e3 blocks everything. So I just put it on g5 because I need to get rid of it. I need to get rid of it. So that's why I play bishop to g5. Because literally it's stopping every every attack I want to do is causing this bishop got to go. So I, I don't have anywhere good to put it. So I'm with bishop g5. What's up, Kanti? You're giving us free nothing. Shh, don't say anything. What's up, made in China? What up, bro? What about bishop f8 right away? Well, bishop f8, I think there was a, a problem with that. I, I, I'm trying to remember right now. Let me actually just put the engine off because it's easy. But bishop f8 didn't work. I remember looking at it because I count, you know, we have a lot of time here. So I know I look at all these moves first. When I'm attacking, I like Tao is my favorite player for a reason. I look at these moves first. These are the first ones I'm looking at. So I, I know I looked at it and it didn't work. And the engine says knight takes f8. Yeah, this is just, then what do you have after this? Like nothing. Knight's defending everything. There's nothing anymore, and it's, it's it's just no, it doesn't work. Yep, there's nothing there. So I thought about that too, bro. Bob, I was like trying to get this bishop out the game, so I played bishop g5. I played bishop g5, bro, and I was out of there. What's the engine eval of this position? Um, this one right here reads. Let me see. It's actually plus zero point five seven. Can you believe that right now? That's why I always say, guys, when you're looking at an engine. You have to have two evaluations. How do you feel about this position as a human? And how does the engine look at it? So you can see what's going on. Because here, obviously, you're going to want to play white here. Obviously. who who's? I mean, you, you got to be like some type of counterattacking genius to want to play black in this position. But it's white. It's white, absolutely. Rook on h4. Who gets a rook on h4? On h2? Come on, bro. 
you better right now. You can't tell me black better here. Where I'm hitting your 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 your, your pawn on h7 with my rook, and I'm castled. It's not a thing. I'm Winning. Jedi. Now I have to wonder what my opponent's going to play. Correct. As Lasker saying, checkmates on f8. Right. Sick analysis. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for the follow. Ah, uh, twenty one. Black looks super passive. Correct. It's hard to make good moves in bad positions. And that's what black just has. He just has a bad position. And you can't expect humans to make, especially, you know, under 2,500. Like our, you know, you're not about to make perfect moves. Bishop, oh, let, let me, uh, let me put this back. So bishop g5, he goes d5. He goes d5. Black would be playing J Roach. Yeah, he's able, he's able to run though, Roach. And I thought the same thing, but he's just able to run. Can you put the white bishop on f6? Uh, Edwin, that's a good question. Let me actually see. Bishop f6, it just doesn't work. I just know. I, and actually, I think you can take with the pawn and just be good. Yeah, it's minus 5 after taking with the pawn. And then queen h6. And actually, I'll probably go knight f8 and just laugh at you. Well, not knight f8 and just stare at you real hard. Real hard. I'm just waiting for a facial expression. I'm going to stare at you so hard right now. Knight f8. Knight f8, bro. It's over. He meant f5. Knight of five? There is no mate. Oh, man. You know how many times I had that face, too? I've done that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to sack, sack, mate. And then you looking at him, and he played knight of eight. And you're like, why do I play this game? Dang. Can you play? Yeah, so bishop f6 doesn't work. Knight is two coming, maybe. Knight is two, knight g4, knight is six. Thanks for the sub. Ele Elevation with the tier one sub. Thank you so much, man. Let me put the lightsabers in the air for you, big fella. Thanks for the love. So, d5, though. He went d5. Black is better. <laughs> with the smiley face. Funny. Yeah, right, right. You Hey, you know what? You can believe anything you want in life. That is so awesome. Is it, no, that's funny. Queen to e2. So, I wanted you guys to figure this out. Actually, I put it on the board moving too fast here. This is the move I made, but let's go back. This is the move right here. He played d5. And what I did is I played queen e2. Can anyone tell me? I just li willingly gave up the c3 pawn. a4 is still hanging. What's my move, guys? What's my move? Why am I doing queen to d1? Yep, queen d1. I made an engine move here. Amused bystander is like, queen d1? With his face like all scrunched up real hard. Wrinkles everywhere. Queen d1, bro? Look. Queen to d1, bro. You were saying queen e2. I probably could have played queen e2. I did play queen d1, though. Threatens queen h5? Maybe. Queen h5 hanging the queen, though. Oh, you mean you have to do some stuff in between. If queen takes c3, bishop d2 traps the queen? No. It actually doesn't, and he didn't take on c3. I mean, his queen's just out of the game. He has to go b2 or a3. Like, either or. You'd be nice to get back here, but you can't. You can just chill over here. You can have this one, too. You know, you know, I'm going to put an extra pawn on the board and play b4 and b5. Give you that one. And then I'm going to attack my, my pieces after. I'm going to just use my pieces after that. Because it just doesn't. It's not a move. So I'll play queen to d1. Waiting move. Yep. I'm confused. I'm confused. c4 maybe. c4. Uh, not. I just don't want to open up lines for him. I don't want. He's only defending. Chess is simple math. I recommend you go to YouTube. Type in Gary Kasparov calculations. There's a book there. Or not a book. There's a. A video of him talking about some a game with Karpov that he won, right? And looking at this game, he talks about um, basically quick math. He was like, yeah, he was talking, calculating, and then he was like, oh, yeah, but, uh, you know, 4-3 uh, is worse than 6-5. And then it kept going. And I was like, oh, that was deep. I learned a lesson, never forgot it. Saw this video many years ago. And chess is like simple math. So he's really defending with like a few pieces. And with me having this attack going, something needs to work. I just need more pieces. And at the right moment, that right move, that right sacrifice, whatever it's going to be, is going to appear. It's going to appear out of nowhere. Looking at cycle h7, check with queen on h5, maybe from chess bowler. Boy, big baller. Big fella in the building. Nice eyes. Nice eyes. Are you planning to go bishop f5? Uh, that, that's, an, that's a possibility. I didn't consider it, but bishop f5 is a possibility. Also, D price is the same. Is it a consideration? Attacks knight and opens the king. He, correct, but I, I like to open a king. This is a good lesson. You want to open a king with like interest. Bishop F, Bishop F5, I'm getting rid of one of my attacking pieces. 
and I didn't really take anything. I just opened a square up. That's like a surprise move. This one don't really work. I would rather sack it and make it weaker and also grab some material than just give it up like that. Clearance for bishop c1, then knight g5. It is a clearance move. Correct. Correct. So queen to d1. He takes on a4. I go bishop d2. And then b5. At this moment, at this moment, I knew that I was going to win the game. So I played bishop d2. He played b5. So what do you do is white here? Stuff's not ready yet. I still got some stuff to do. What do you do now? Rook takes h7 from ethical kid. Ethical kid. I'm a Jedi. A Jedi. What do you know? Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. What do you do? What do you do? Is he crazy? Rook takes a7. Is he crazy? Knight g5. Knight g5. Ignoring you completely saying. You have nothing. Yeah. Knight g5. I'm back on a knight g5 crew. Absolutely. Hey, y'all. What's up? What's up, Magnuth? Welcome to the stream. So, rook takes h7 looks really good. But it just doesn't work because the knight is still on g5. When I move my knight to g5, it doesn't work. Sneaky P says bishop takes g6. Uh, you might as well resign after that one. Yeah, bishop takes g6 that this is the key piece to this this whole thing so giving this up you might as well just a hey, shake hand right after you take the piece and hit the clock shake his hand just stick your arm out there i'm a super gm that's right welcome to the stream bro 95 knight f8 oops sorry no you guys pete you good pete psyka thank you so much for the raid welcome to the stream and thank you so much for that follow again hope you had a great stream Okay, so after b5, um, I went knight g5. That is correct. We in the knight g5 crew. That's right. Hey, Canty, how's it going, bro? Schwobster. What's up, Schwoby? How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. How are you? Hope things are well. How's the kids? What's up, bro? How's the fam? What up, big fella? So knight to g5. Knight to g5. It's time to clear. It's time to clear and go crazy here. Of course, he takes it. I take it. And then the man jumps off the deep end all the way down with a smile, found the tallest building he could find, and jumped off as he plays bishop to e6. And now it's white to move, guys. White to move. Find it. What is it? Are you a Jedi or are you not? This is your moment. What do you do? Schwobi with the 10 bits. Thanks, bro. Appreciate the 10 bits. Appreciate the 10 bits. This is your time to shine, Jedi. I'm going to put my lightsaber in the air right now. Did you find it? Will you find it? Ethical kiss is now where it takes h7. Pie man with king h1, darkest army with rook h7, followed by queen h5. What could bishop e6 possibly set up? You know what? I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. I, I didn't even know. I didn't know what was going to what he was going to do here. Rook takes h7. Okay, rook takes h7 looks nice. Rook takes h7. F4 from wheel. Rook sack. And here we go, guys. And here we go. It's unanimous. Rook takes h7. Lean back, all that other stuff. Rook takes h7. What a move. He cannot take this rook. He cannot take the rook. So let's see what happens if he does, because people want to know. You want to see this kind of stuff. What happens if he does kick it, can't he? Well, we hit the man with the lightsaber and everything else in between. Check. King g8, because if you go g7, which is the same thing, we're going to look at both. But king g8 is more of like, let me run away. Then I just snap here with a mate threat, another one. Another may threat, right? So let's just do the simple line. Pawn takes, queen takes, bishop g7, bishop h6, gg. Have a good day. It's over. Get the man off the board. Now, here's another one, though. What about bishop g7? Because if king f8 is just easy, right? Bishop g7. Whoa. Watch this, though. Check. Kier. Bishop h, h8. Oh, my goodness. And it's like the matrix. All the way back. Bishop h6. Oh, man. Hit and mate here if he takes it. Mate on the back rank. Oh, my goodness. Why he do him like that? It's beautiful. It was beautiful, man. I was very proud of this game when we played this. It was such a great game to be able to play Rick takes h7 and then stare at him. Rick takes h7. It was great. So, he, you know, you can't. There's no way out of the mate. It's so cool. There's no way out of it. And then if you do king g7, it's just one move off because now the queen's just here. It's no difference. And it becomes the same. So, uh, more of the story here. He did not take it. He did not take it at all. Instead, 
Great game. Thanks. Have a good day. Wow, nice game. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks. I know it was awesome. It was awesome to be able to see this at the board, bro. It was just like, it's so cool to be able to see this at the board. But it takes time. That's why we have so much um, time on the clock. Mates everywhere, bro. It was everywhere. Mates everywhere. It was so cool to be able to sack this. Knowing the queen is on the other side of civilization, you might as well just scooch it off the board slowly. Nobody's watching. Just push it off the board because it's not doing anything at all. Imagine Canty staring down at H7. Yeah. Boxing him. I'm good. Yeah. Why he do him like that? I don't even know. I don't even know what happened. Like, why he do him like that? So, he didn't take it. He played Bishop G7 here. He played Bishop G7. So, now what do you do? Do you tip your that is not a move hat in him? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bob, Bob says I should have just pushed the queen off the board. Just, hey, man. Hey, well, I'm going to push this off. Okay, your move. I'm going to stop the clock real quick. Stop the clock. Push the board off. And then hit it back. Like it's part of the game. You should have just. He's still trying to play queen side. Black went off the deep end, correct? He did not expect that, right? So, bishop to g7, though. Now, what do you do here for white? Most people are stinking to sack the rook. Maybe rook h8. Bishop takes g6. All these are ideas. What do you do? I have no idea what to do here, says Darkest Army. Well, that's good. You, you get to learn here. You get to learn a little bit on what to do now. I think this is a good lesson about this here. Take the bishop, bishop h6, bishop takes g6, f4. So ask yourself this, guys. A lot of times, what's your follow-up? If you don't have a follow-up, it's usually never good. If you like, uh, the move is here. Okay, and then what? And then you're like, well, I didn't think that far. And then I'm going to be like, exactly. Bishop takes g6 protect, protects the rook on h7, but I just take on g6, though. And then you are, have lost a piece. Not only have you given up one of the pieces, you need something else to replace it. Maybe h4. What's up, my man? How are you? How are you guys all doing? What's up, Strider? Strider, CPK. We doing great, man. Welcome to the stream. Bye, Jim Kenty. What's up? Uh, peace out, Shreya Chess. Thank you for hanging out. Rookie four. That's a wild move, Edwin. That's a wild move. Just doesn't work, though. Queen d3, rook h5 from Bob's combo. Rook h5, though. I think I did consider that. I did. Link Cody, thanks for the host. I honestly did consider rook h5. Five equals five is rook back. I kind of want to march the h pawn. Here we go, guys. Here we go. This is what I chose. Rook h4. There are times that when you're attacking, you have to just back up and then go forward again. Back up and go forward again. You just have to stop because you've done a lot. Now we got to regroup. If you play basketball, it's like, oh, we're trying to do the play and blah, blah, blah. The play don't work. You know what? Throw it back up to the top of the key and you guys reset. If you're driving a car, you don't just go straight all the time. You got to back up and then go forward again. It's the same thing. Thanks for helping me helping make chess cool. Thanks, Link Cody. Appreciate it, big fella. Tactical retreat. Correct. Good analogy. Thanks, GP. One step back, two steps forward from Wookiee. Yes. So I play Rook H4. I just get out of the way. And honestly, guys, I've considered all of your moves here. So a, a big thing I like to say is calculation is key. I mean, calculation, you got to be able to calculate. And a lot of that help, happens with tactics. The more tactics you do, the better the calculations will be over time. Over time. So Rook H4, um, because everything just didn't work. Bishop takes don't work. Rook takes G7 don't work. Nothing works. And my Rook's still hanging. I'm just going to move my rook out of the way. Hi. What's up, Flankton? Flankton? Welcome to the stream. Queen a6. So I was thinking at this time, he's going to swing. He's going to try to do this. But here's a, one, two, three, four moves. He may not have another four moves. But at the same time, I know white's doing well. Because I'm, I'm only attacking. I'm attacking. Queen a6, poor guy. Oh, yeah, this was tough. I mean, honestly, this is tough. But, I mean, I'm feeling good. It's white here. But I still have to figure it out. I guarantee that you probably will not, most of you will not get this next one right. White to move. And that probably will help you in this choice. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I helped you. But it's white to move here, guys. And it's not your first thought. It is not your first thought. Queen d2 from Chris Ryer. Queen d2, queen d2, why doesn't he play f6? Oh, please play f6. Absolutely. 
first off, shout out to Feingo. He came in with the raid, and F6 is there too. So, you know, we don't want to make him mad. Let's not play F6. Uh, battle run F5, F4, Queen D3. He is in trouble. So chess player, pawn F4, F4. F4, don't play F6. A lot of moves here. A lot of moves. So, honestly, F4 is a nice move. It's a nice move, but what I didn't like about F4 is he goes Queen C8, and then after G4, it, he's starting to defend. This is actually defended, so maybe he could get away with F6 and F5. So, uh, different stuff. You have to get that pawn on F6 out. Bishop H6. Squill says rookie 3. Did anyone guess it right? Yes, actually. Tevin says pawn C4. Here it is. Shout out. Big shout out to the big fella in the chat. Let's put a lightsaber. Okay, here's the shout out because you found it. Only one person named it, and that is Squills Meyer. Rookie 3. I play rook to E3. And this is a, a very interesting concept, guys. I probably could have, not probably, but all the other ways still win just longer. It's just longer. Rookie 3 seems slow. Yeah, but F4, and then I got to play G4, and then I got to play F5, and then takes, and hopefully it works. And then Queen H5. It's not all the way clear yet, but I saw that this rook, if I get two rooks doing this, bro, this is out in like a few moves. So I found what everyone else was trying to do too in a quicker way. Rook to E3. He said feel slow. Yeah, and I felt like I had I needed something slow. That Out of the slow ideas that we have here, what's the fastest of the slow ideas? And I thought that this was, because when you get two rooks aiming, you can't, there's, come on, this is out. This is out, right? So I'll play rookie three. Is that the best move? So the best move, and actually I think I have to refresh it because the eval like turned off for some reason. I click lines and it's not doing anything. So it needs to be refreshed. Let me actually do that. Let me refresh here. Okay, so Ricky 3, let me see if it's pulling up lines. The best move is... <laughs> Can it... I'm laughing because I always laugh. The engine just surprises me all the time. And that's why I'm laughing. Like, are you serious? That's the best move right now. Stop. Stop playing with me right now. What do you think the best move is, guys? What do you think the best move is? The engine it surprises you every time. Good thing Black has zero counterplay. Yes, pairing the rooks like that. One of the first takes I remember being taught. Nice, Jaded. That's what's up. How deep? How deep did you calculate here for rookie before rookie three? Honestly, a long time because I thought about the idea, so I had to probably be thinking fifteen minutes, maybe twenty minutes on that. The hardest part because I had to see it all, maybe less. I just don't remember. It's a long time. It's like four years ago. The hardest part of attacking me is knowing slot on rook. Yeah. King h1. Okay, that's that's close. King f1. That stuff's close. Y'all real close. King h1. King moves. Queen d2. Shout out to presence. Yeah, and thanks for the follow too. Yep. It's queen d1 and queen c1. <laughs> this is the engine moves. And you talking about what? Queen e, queen c1. Queen c1. Best move on the board. What? Queen c1? No. You, you probably consider g4 first before queen to c1. It's just... It's just not a move computers don't play with here well alpha zero that's right so i'll play rookie three that's a human move that's human rookie three rook g3 it looks great it's just winning everything's winning so here we go rookie three he goes queen c8 because he's stopping stuff from here of course i have to follow up rook to g3 he goes bishop f5 so bishop f5 he wants to trade so if he trades his queen finally gets to this side of the board my students know to take is a mistake most times so taking this would just not be good. Queen takes and it's just, yeah, I'm still winning. But at least his queen's back over here to defend and help out a lot. So I'm not going to take this. So what what would I do now? This whole time the engine is like, bro, go back and trade a bishop. <laughs> yeah, is E3 an engine move? Uh, is E3 even an engine move? No, it wasn't. It was not. It was just funny. But they still was like, oh, you win winning still, but that's not what I considered. I didn't consider that, but you're still winning. Yeah, thanks, engine. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm going to go over here with my human self. So, because when Bishop on G7 is gone, it's animate. Yeah, thanks for the follow. Text is too tough. Why don't you ever do a simul? Sometimes we do, Bob. Sometimes we do. We got to set it up. Rook at four. Yeah, afterwards. So, Bishop at five. Correct. I play Bishop H6. I play Bishop H6. Well, E6 allows Queen takes E6. He just takes it. He's fine. 
So I'll play bishop to h6, and I was just ready to set up. Now if he takes it, which he does, I oh know he doesn't do it, he actually doesn't, but after taking it and rook takes, my queen gets to come to h5 because this rook's helping out with the mate. So my queen about to get over here, it's just about to get ridiculous. It's like my rook, it's almost like this pawn is not here anymore. Anymore. So I get to do so much. 200 viewers, shout out to all 200 of you right now. Thank you so much for hanging out. And again, thanks for all the love guys so after bishop takes h6 well it's not a thing he actually took on d3 though bishop takes d3 i snapped on d3 okay he goes queen e6 and now and now guys very simple i mean it's very simple this is it, it, i wish this was something super tactical crush him sack sack mate throw you know throw hit him with the sink and then backflip and all the extra stuff but it didn't work it was none of that right we got to a position similar and then we kind of simplified it a little bit and then it was over. Derek3731, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. After queen e6, what do you do as white? What do you do as white? How do you finish this game off? Thanks for the follow, Siva Will. Thanks for the follow. Bishop takes h6. It is a move, but here's the problem with bishop takes, guys. First off, what's your follow-up? Somebody give me a follow-up here. Somebody give me a follow-up because this is not a move. What do you do after bishop takes h6? What, what should you do? What, what are you trying to do? Thanks for the follow, Zinjis. Thanks for the follow thanks for the follow queen e3 queen e3 right so all everyone's going for h6 right but all they have to do all they have to do is play rook h8 that is it and this is a lesson for all of you that play this line or anything like this be careful before you take this you gotta be very careful because i'm fine because i get to defend and if you take it i mean i'm just fine and i'm defending i am defending i've done this so many times being under attack and also this being faced by myself as well. So you need to be careful on when you take it. So of course, I'm not going to take it. I'm gonna let him take it because King G7, it takes an extra move for him to get there and every extra move counts, especially in chess. So not a thing, not a thing. Rook on top of each other, Rook takes G6. I read forward, forward, inside, ops, chess goes one way. <laughs> yeah, oops, never mind. not a move, correct. Move order, queen e3 first. Ah, I like that, I like that, but not the move. Not the move, I actually like the placing of my queen right now. Man, that's crazy, nobody said it yet. Let me make sure, nobody said it yet. Oh, okay, we got one. We got one, one person said it, two, per, two people. Okay, shout out, big shout outs. We'll take it, because we got two people that got it. Shout out to Bob Sakamo and Sid Sevens with F4. F4 is the move. F4. It's simple. How do you stop F5? How do you stop F5? If you play F6, I'm going to take. If you play F5, I can opposite first, and then G6 is hanging. Chess.com with the raid. What's up, guys? Chess.com in here. Welcome the Raiders. Get hype in the chat. Chess.com came in with the raid. Let's go. Put some lightsabers in the air. Some we in here. Some big fellas. And let's go. Welcome Chess.com. Chess.com just raided the channel with 100 people. So we in here right now. Welcome to the stream. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks for the follow. Stay Kaj. Thank you. King's Bishop. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Chess.com. That's right. That's right. So we're going over a game here. We'll redo the game for all you guys getting here. We will redo it. Just to look at it so you guys can see the analysis here. Came in 16. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Hit the follow button if you are new to the stream. Thank you so much. This is going on the YouTube channel right here. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Thank you so much for hanging out here. Welcome. Hope you learned something today. So F5 just wouldn't work due to opposite, and I'm just snapping on G6, and it's just a matter of time. It's really over. It's really over. So we out here. That's right. Light night. We out here. Thanks so much. So we go back. And once I go f4, okay, he takes on h6, I take on h6, hey, and then honestly, he resigned. He resigned right here. This is the position he resigned on. But looking a little bit further, thanks for the follows, everybody. King g7, I can just go f5. f5 is just winning. I can also take everything, and this is, this is over, right? This is over. Yeah, F5 is born for Yeah, right. Yeah, that's F5. So that's over. But again, looking at this game from the beginning, if you're just getting here and want to know what's going on, this is a game I played in 2015. In 2015, North American Open in the under 2300 section. My opponent is 2106, Raul Cristalago. And I remember this game. Canty uh, works the perk. It's called the Pierce, actually, but everybody knows it as perk. 
So looking at this, I'm playing white. We go through this again. Here we go. And just so you guys know, this is what I play against the perk. You have many other ways to play against the perk. You can do bishop. You can play f3, bishop e3, queen d2, castle queen side. You could also do um, four pawns attack, f4, knight f3, h3 to stop stuff like that. Bishop e3 and uh, and queen d2, castle queen side. Really, most of these are always like, you know, bishop f4, queen d2, castle queen side. All the time in the perk. So you get these kind of attacks where you can push the h pawn and go crazy on this side of the board. That's usually how it goes. So here we go. Knight f3, bishop g7, h3. I always like to do this to stop knight g4, so I go bishop e3. Castles, bishop e3. And you have many multiple moves here. Shout out to Sid Sevens. He actually does go, I think, uh, I think you play knight c6 some here sometimes. He also plays like c6 and some other ones. Some other ones. But there's many moves to, to play here. My favorite, so just to tell you, if you play a me, my favorite to face is knight d7. So be careful playing knight d7 because that's my favorite one. But if you play anything else, not that it's not my favorite. I know how to handle it. Here, D, uh, c6, e5 is absolutely a move. I just like a4 a lot. In blitz games, I'll play e5. Gemini of Cancer. 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 My perk seems to be for people who love getting attacked. The perk seems to be... <laughs> yeah, that's a funny one. That's a funny one. That's funny. So a4, defending b5. Knight a6, queen d2. Make a few waiting moves here. Get out the way. And then he goes rookie 8. I thought this was an error. I think maybe he probably could have tried for e5 right now. Because if something like this, then he has this. Right? That's like a King's Indian defense tactic. So if I take your knight, you take mine. But also you open up the bishops. And you do, you're doing quite fine here, actually. Rook d1. And then uh, maybe move to bishop e6. And you can trade queens. Or I can just move mine. And actually my bishops look pretty good. Pretty solid position. I think he could try for that. But instead, he put rookie eight to go e5. And I'm like, not today. So I'll play e5 myself. So thanks so much for the 100 bits. A nice job explaining things, Canty. Thanks, Chaos Planet. Thank you so much. I'm glad I can help. So knight to d5, bishop h6. And just fast forward this game. Um, rookie one. We get to this position. I drop rookie four on him. And I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Just like how it is in uh, all tactics and um, like Tau games and stuff like this. This is my favorite. New to this, send me a link to toss you some coin um it's actually just in the in the chat man just click the little button thing click the little button thing or you can do this too this this helps the channel too so rook to e4 after rook to e4 bishop h8 i double up but honestly i could have played rook h4 but again like i was saying before before if you weren't here before guys i actually like to say um it, the best kind of attacks are the ones that are prepared and I, every piece is ready to go every piece is ready to help so i'm out of the way are you trying to take the f5 square no, f5 square would actually be good for him. If he gets a bishop to f5, you need to trade. If you're being attacked, I tell you right now, if you are being attacked, one of the best ways to defend is start to take the pieces that are attacking you. But you need to calculate correctly because we might take the wrong piece and it just be over. Start a new one. So that can happen a lot. The knight to g7, rook h4, I'm out the way. I thought he was going to go knight f5, but knight f5 always allows me to get queen g5 in and in and stuff that I want. But he went back to e6, and I thought this was an error. Because now we got the same position we had a move ago, but it's my move now. And the rook's on h4, so this is better. I'll play bishop g5, because this was an interesting move. I had to get this queen in the game somehow, and the bishop had to move. So I had to do something about it. So I got it out of the way. Bishop g5, he goes d5. And I thought about sacking, didn't work. Bishop f6 didn't work. So you know what, queen d1, back it up this way. We're going to go the long way. We're going to figure this out one way or another, big fella. We're going to figure this out. So... I played queen to d1. He took on a4, and I'm like, well, you can have anything you want on the side of the board because the queen cannot get back. So afterwards, I go bishop d2. Here we go. Knight g5. Get rid of the piece. Thanks for the follow. Light knight. Thank you. Bishop e6 and sack the rook. Oh, my goodness. There it is. Rook takes h7. You can't take it because it's mate in every way and every way. And then we fast forward to the moves, actually. Um, just show the mate here mate that way that was not the game but the game finished here with bishop to g7 rook h4 and rook e3 all the way around just like this and the game finishes right here right here so that was it guys but that is this game on canty working the perk i love to play against the perk i have uh what is my record against the perk right now? 200 bits thanks so much presence for the 200 bits thank you so much um, my record, I've played the perk three times against it. In tournament play, I'm two and a half out of three games. So, you gotta be careful. 
you got to be careful. Isn't the rook free? Absolutely, the rook's free. I mean, go ahead. You can take it if you like. Absolutely. I'm just about to take the queen now. I mean, hey, look, you can do whatever you like in, in life, of course. You have your own choices and opinions. And if you want to do that, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's just not a good move, though. I'm just taking the queen. I'm just taking the, the, the queen the queen here. And I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have another game to show? No, we're actually going to do two tournaments right after this. So, by the way, guys, if you are in the chat, you want to play in our next two tournaments here. Um, club. Join the club here. Join the club, and then we're going to have the tournament, which is a bullet tournament. That's number one. And then we have a blitz tournament directly after. But it is club tournament. Whoa, Chaos Planet just dropped 1501 in, in the chat, guys, and shared it with all of you. Shared it with 35 others, actually. So 1500 bits says keep on rocking Canty and stream more often. Absolutely, Chaos Planet. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that love. Appreciate that support. Feeny Chess with the follow. Thank you. I learned a lot from that game. Thanks, Dota. It's going on the YouTube channel, guys. If you are not subscribed, you can always get notified when we do these. It's on YouTube. So check that out. So thanks so much for that, and I'll see you on the next.